Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So this is a shard of gallium metal, and this here is a piece of indium metal. A gallium melts at about uh, 30 degrees centigrade, and indium melts at 157 degrees centigrade. Gallium should be able to melt at body temperature of 37 degrees centigrade, but I've never really actually gotten it to do that, at least not in my hand. If I take these two metals, which are solid, and I combine them, Look what happens. A liquid is formed. <laughs> In fact, uh, these two materials, when they're combined, they form a eutectic alloy, which melts at 15 degrees centigrade, which is liquid in my hand. In fact, uh, this is very similar to adding salt to ice uh, in the way that this causes it to melt. You're forming a material which has a much higher entropy and thus uh, you know, it's harder for it to form uh, perfectly arranged crystals. You know, basically the, uh, the second metal gets in the way of the crystal formation of the first metal, and that causes the randomness to be a little bit more, and so it's liquid down to a lower temperature. <laughs> now I can actually feel that the metal got colder. If we watch this happen with a thermal camera, you can see the metal here. And now let's uh, combine it with the indium. Now uh, you can't really see much happening because the metal is mostly just reflecting and showing the temperature of the room. But if I add a bunch of this and let it cool off, you'll be able to see that my hand underneath the metal has cooled significantly. See this spot here? This is actually making it cold. Now of course this has only taken it down to about 15 degrees centigrade. As the solid metal liquefies, it absorbs energy. Theoretically, it will absorb enough heat to lower its temperature down to its freezing point, which I can lower by adding a little bit of tin down to 10 degrees Celsius. As you can see, the tin actually broke as the gallium alloy combined with it made it brittle. <laughs> so this would just barely be liquid at room temperature at 11 degrees Celsius. So here's a little bottle. Let me just take this... Uh, Gallium, and first of all, kind of bend or break it into a shape that'll fit down in here. Now, when we add the thermometer, we should be able to stir this around and observe a temperature drop. Of course, the thermometer did just increase because I touched it with my fingers. Oh, there you go. It has dropped to about one degree centigrade below room temperature. You see now that I've taken the thermometer out, it has come back up to room temperature. So now I've transferred the alloy into a test tube here. There's still some chunks of other metal, uh, tin and indium in there. So I'm going to warm this up to get it to dissolve a little faster. Basically melt the metals together. So now that this metal is cooled off, it's safe for me to pour it out onto my hand. There we are. Some liquid metal. Now for storage, I'm going to pour this metal off into a plastic bottle. It's very important that the bottle be plastic, because if this does freeze, it expands and will break the bottle. And I've had that happen. There we are. There's our gallon stand. Now if you're like me, the first question you might have after making a liquid metal alloy like this, is what happens if I mix it with another liquid metal alloy? In this case, NAC. This is a sodium potassium alloy, which was made in pretty much the same way as the gallon stand. Now I've actually got it stored underneath of kerosene because this stuff is very reactive. In fact, if I drop some into water here, it instantly ignites and explodes. <laughs> So let's see what happens if we mix the gallon stand with the knack. Okay, so let's put a drop of the gallon stand out on the table and a drop of knack right there next to it. Okay. Let's see what happens if I bring them together. Okay, they didn't react, at least not vigorously. Ok, 
kind of mix them in a little bit. Oh yeah, it's solidifying. It's not completely solidified. You can see it is mostly solid now. Let's find out what happens if I drop it into some water. Let me pick it up. Ooh. <laughs> well, it ignited and burned. Just like the liquid sodium would do. Leaving behind some gallium metal there. Try some of this that didn't freeze. That did not react. So what I think happened here is the two liquid metal alloys reacted with each other to form an alloy which had less entropy and was able to crystallize easier. So the uh, sodium reacted with the gallium, for instance, and it made something that had a melting point which was much higher. So basically the reverse of what happens normally when you add another metal. So you normally you get like a V-shaped uh, eutectic graph, but this must have had something that had a, you know, a pyramid shape. Now to test this, I want to try with a larger quantity inside of a test tube, so you know there's less oxygen reacting with it, and I'm going to measure the temperature. I'm going to try not to touch the thermometer so that my fingers don't warm it up. And I'm going to add in the sodium. There it is. Okay, and now let's kind of stir it around with the thermometer probe. And let's see what happens. Hmm. I might have got too much uh, kerosene in there. For them to make good contact. And it is warming up though. See, if uh, it is forming a material if it is forming an alloy that is a solid and is not soluble in the uh, liquid metal, then it should release the heat of fusion, causing the temperature to increase. And I think that's exactly what's going on here. Cool. And, and uh, since there is a bunch of kerosene in there covering it, I know it's not oxidation that's causing it to heat up. Uh, my other camera died, so let's switch to this for a little while. Yeah, it's already heated up to 16 degrees centigrade. Stir it around a little bit more. Yeah, it is getting very spongy in there as that uh, metal is solidifying out. So it's basically precipitating from solution, if you think about it. So back to this camera. Uh, the temperature got uh, you know, over 10 degrees above the ambient temperature. That was kind of cool watching that happen. You know, the heat of solidification is definitely there. And actually, it looks like the whole thing is solidified now. I mean, it's not really solidified. I think there's still an excess of the gallium alloy. Yeah. You see it's running out of the mixture. Let's see if we can get this uh, sodium potassium out of there. There we go. I should be able to actually give this a squeeze and squeeze out that metal. So yeah, I'm squeezing out the gallon stand, and I'm retaining uh, whatever it is that is reacted. So it's probably a gallium, uh, sodium, and potassium alloy here, which is not liquid. <laughs> so this stuff does react with water. I'm going to add it to the water kind of slowly. <laughs> yeah, not all at once. I don't want uh, too big of an explosion here. Ooh, 
Hydrogen. Alright. So that's probably most of the sodium and potassium gone. Oops. There's a little bit of the potassium that is stuck to it, per se. Yeah, but for the most part, this is just the gallon stand right now. <clears throat> Probably a little bit different alloy composition since something got used up with the sodium. Let's actually pour a little water out onto it. Yeah, so there's just basically some of the potassium sodium containing alloy just sticking to it. It looks like it's all used up now. Let's put it back in the bottle. So here's the metal after the sodium has been burned out by the water. Well, at least most of it has been. If I push it back together, it looks like it will liquefy again. If it's not too badly oxidized. Yeah. Actually, you know what? This is not liquefying. Yeah, I bet what happened is the uh, gallium basically has been extracted. Yeah, I think this is probably more pure gallium. It doesn't have uh, as much as the indium and tin in it anymore. Uh, e either that or there's more indium. I'm not entirely sure what this composition is left over here. But it is definitely different. It's actually kind of interesting how it's uh, igniting as I rub it around on my fingers here. If I had too much more of it, this could be a problem. I think what's happening is the uh, potassium oxides are reacting with the metal. Yeah, the potassium superoxide is forming. Can I strike it like a match? <laughs> All right. Definitely want to dispose of this so that it doesn't spontaneously combust on me. <laughs> yeah, things igniting is fine as long as you're expecting it. Okay, I think I got everything reacted with water. So, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.